It's about time for the big game, so here is our go-to snack. Take some oyster crackers, crunchy cereal, or pretzels, and toss them with butter and your favorite seasoning, like French onion, honey sriracha, or garlic parmesan. Stir or toss until everything is coated, and pour them onto a baking sheet or stoneware, and bake for 30 minutes at 250 degrees. Eat them separately, or mix them all together for a unique snack mix. Perfect for that last minute addition to your football spread. What's your go-to snack? French fries are good, but homemade loaded French fries are even better. The Rapid Prep Mandolin makes cutting potatoes easy and fun. Plus, they're all cut perfectly even. Toss the potatoes with oil and seasoning salt. Then put them into the air fryer basket. Cook until crispy and browned. Frozen fries will work too. Now it's time to build our loaded fries. Leftover taco meat, beans, and chili make great toppings. And of course, cheese. Broil for a couple minutes to get the cheese nice and melty. Then top with green onions, tomatoes, avocado, and a sprinkle of Tex-Mex rub. How would you top your fries? It's about time for the big game. Hey everyone, welcome to Test Kitchen Live. Are you guys ready for game day comfort foods? We know the big game is coming up this weekend. And as you're joining, I want you to put in the chat, of course, where are you watching from? But I also wanna know, what are you excited for? for the big game, okay? Is it football? Is it snacks and food? Is it halftime show or commercials? Um, I know I'm all about, I'm all about the food, all about the snacks. So please write in. We want to know what you guys are excited for and who are you rooting for? Um, I'm rooting for the Chiefs. <laughs> We've got some representation for the Eagles over with Abby, who I'm going to introduce in just one second. So we have a couple um, special guest stars tonight that we're really excited for and so much yummy food. Um, but first, Abby is manning the chat. Hi, Abby. Hi. We got a lot of people in the chat already saying commercials, commercials. We got some Eagles fans. We got some Chiefs fans. I didn't have any Eagles gear, but I yeah. thought I would wear Eagles colors. I think Abby looks lovely in the Eagles colors. We're representing. Yeah. And so I'm watching the chat today. Make sure you're participating. There might be some surprises later. There's definitely, definitely going to be some surprises. If you watch Test Kitchen Live, there's always some fun surprises. Okay. So again, please, if you're still joining us, uh, we love it when you interact interact with us in the chat. It makes it so fun. So let us know where are you watching from um, and what are you excited for for the big game? So our first delicious treat is going to be air fryer chicken wings. Uh, the air fryer was on sale last month. So if you got it last month or if you have it, period, let us know what do you love in the air fryer? What are you making? Um, the, the air fryer chicken wings, these are really just epic. And if you don't believe me, go to pamperchef.com and look at this recipe and look at all of the reviews. They are amazing. Um, so let me just tell you what I got here. I have some chicken wings right here, about two pounds, salt, pepper, and baking powder, which is kind of an unusual ingredient. The baking powder is going to really help dry out and help the skin crisp up in the air fryer. So baking powder, not baking soda. Your guests, your game day guests are not going to be happy with you if it's baking soda. So baking powder, that's it. You let that sit for about five minutes. I'm just going to add one tablespoon of oil, which um, thank you, air fryer. Like chicken wings are usually deep fried and the air fryer lets you make them with one tablespoon of oil. And I promise they get so crispy and delicious. This is really a superstar recipe. So I did some homework. <laughs> For this recipe, I love my food trivia. I'd love to know if anybody out there on the chat uh, knows about this. I want to know, like, how did chicken wings get so popular? 
as a football food. So it turns out in the 80s, there was a family in Buffalo, New York, and they started deep frying their wings. And then in the 90s, the Buffalo Bills were in the Super Bowl four different times. And that's when Buffalo Wings got super um, popular. But Abby told me that if you were in Buffalo, don't call them Buffalo. No, they'll know you're from out of town. <laughs> if you want to feel like a local, you got to just say, I want wings. Just wings. That okay, means don't... Buffalo Wings because you're in got Buffalo. It. Don't call the Buffalo Wings if you're in Buffalo. We were saying um, there's that anchor bar in Buffalo, New York. I've been there once with my family. Pretty epic. It's kind of like the home of the Buffalo Wings, which is kind of cool. All right. So these go in the air fryer. Sorry, hard to see. On the um, air fry setting for 30 minutes. That's it. You're going to just rotate your trays halfway through, but that's it. Super hands off, super easy. And what you get? Got some delicious crispy wings. So we tossed half of these with just a mixture of melted butter and hot sauce. That's it. Like when you go for wings at the restaurant, that's all they do. Melted butter and hot sauce. These are plain because um, I'm going to show you another really quick sauce. That's actually in February Taste Buds. We're giving you a little preview and it features the garlic, crushed peppercorn and garlic, which is a really great rub. So Abby, what's going on with Taste Buds? Yeah, love Taste Buds. Great flavors every month. It's one of our subscriptions. And this month it's on sale, the three month subscription. So when you get the three month subscription this month in February, you get your first month free. So it's a great time to try this out. So much inspiration. Um, so... We give a lot of, we give recipes and taste buds, but a lot of kind of just like tips and fun ways to use your seasoning. So this is one fun way, just a tablespoon of crushed peppercorn, which is one of my faves. And we have a little bit of barbecue sauce and a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. I'm just gonna, this is really great for uh, dipping chicken nuggets just be a yummy dip for veggies, but I thought it would be really fun to go with chicken wings. Okay, people liking the wings so far? Yeah, and Peggy from Buffalo said we got the trivia right. So, <laughs> see, I like my food trivia. I think it's fun, I get curious. Okay, so we've got some with the hot sauce and the butter. We've got our delicious crushed peppercorn dipping sauce. And now our friend Becky, who is a Pampered Chef consultant is zooming in to show us the Peruvian green sauce in the deluxe cooking blender, which is on sale this month. She's gonna tell us all about the sauce and why she loves the uh, blender. Hi, Becky. Hi, Sandy. Thanks, Sandy. Hi, everyone. Welcome to my kitchen. And I am so happy to show you all this yummy Peruvian green sauce. It is truly delicious. Your kids are gonna love it too. So we're gonna put some cilantro, fresh herbs, our best, and what's great with, you don't have to cut it up in a whole bunch of little pieces, just toss your bunch of cilantro in the blender. And we're gonna do a one jalapeno seeded. I'm actually going to just put in half because my little guy, he's five and mommy don't make it too pithy. So half of that. And we're gonna do the juice, half of the line with our citrus press, makes it super duper easy. Again, fresh. Who needs bottled lime juice when you have got the fresh, fresh garlic? With our garlic press, you don't have to peel or clean it. You just put it in the press, give it a good squeeze. And it comes with this handy dandy little gizmo for easy cleaning. Stores in the handle so you don't lose it. We're gonna put some vinegar in there with our little petite measure off. My very first item I bought from Pepper Chef was the Measure All Cup. This is mayonnaise. Any of y'all remember what your first product was that you bought from Pepper Chef? I love this because it's such an easy clean. I mean, you all know how messy it is to measure out peanut butter, ketchup, mustard. So the dry on that side, the liquids on the other side. And our skinny scraper is on is our guest special this month. The blender's on sale. This is the guest special. You check that out online to see how much you need to spend to get that. And we have fresh grated Parmesan. If you notice my canister has some Parmesan crumbs, that's because I grated the Parmesan in the blender. 
So you can get a wedge at the grocery. I just cut it up in like six, eight small, smaller pieces, put it in there, and literally 30 seconds, and you have fresh. Look how amazing. So who has time to be, you know, gr great in my hand? And we're gonna add some salt. Now we're just going to pulse this together. The great thing is with the blender, you have to put the lid on before takeoff. No emergencies here. And we have this lovely, gorgeous green color. Okay, this sauce, yes, it is delicious on wings, but the kids, they love it to dip their chicken nuggets in it. I had it today, uh, lunch with lettuce, uh, just deli turkey wraps, uh, deli turkey, lettuce, put some sauce in, takes it up a whole notch. Okay, now I know a lot of people are like, what's a cooking blender? My blender can cook. Well, this blender actually has a cooking element. Yeah, you can make homemade sauces, soup, and you don't have to spend a bunch of time cutting up your veggies, you know, tiny small pieces, cutting up the onion first before you put it in the soup. The blender's gonna take care of it for you. You can make homemade marinara, again, fresh is best. This way you're in control of what's in the sauce. I mean, I love hiding veggies and we have the uh, hidden veggie marinara uh, recipe. You're gonna get this awesome cooking guide with the blender. It's got those recipes in there. It'll show you how to make peanut butter, almond butter, um, and not only soup for sauces, but hot fudge, caramel sauce. And you can make jam. Literally, you just put it on the setting and let it do its thing. And you can grind wheat berries if you're doing your flour. Uh, I like to grind rolled oats for oat flour. It can do so many things. And of course, smoothies. We, if I'm making multiple serving smoothies, I uh, use the canister, but we also have our smoothie cup and adapter, and this is on sale this month too. So this just goes on there. So if you need some easy on the go. And I love the heated wash cycle. So of course you wanna empty your canister first, but you're just gonna add water and a little bit of soap, put it on here, heated wash. Okay, so if you don't feel like you're much of a cook or a chef, y'all, this thing, this amazing cooking blender will do the work for you, I promise. Okay, so now, Sandy, the only thing better would be if I could be over there with you eating the wings with the sauce, but I guess I'll just have to have my own wings with the sauce. This has been so much fun. Thanks for having me. much Becky that was so awesome thank you for sharing your love of the Peruvian green sauce and the deluxe cooking blender I totally agree there's so much you can do with this in that self-cleaning mode that's just the cherry on top so we can't talk about the cooking blender without talking about the nacho cheese sauce so I want you guys to blow up the chat if you've made the it's the nacho cheese sauce okay and if you don't believe me again why don't you go to paperchip.com and look at the reviews on this recipe. It's incredible. You can make nacho cheese um, in about 40 to 45 minutes, mostly with the ingredients that you just have at home. There's milk, there's um, taco seasoning, or you can use our Tex-Mex or everything taco, um, jalapeno. Again, you could kind of customize that, use half a jalapeno, um, take it out all together. Then you make a really quick um, roux in the microwave, which is just butter and milk. You add that in and then you add some cheese at the end and you have nacho cheese sauce. Tell me how good this looks. This is good for nachos, of course, which we're going to make. How about chili cheese fries? How about um, potatoes, baked potatoes or just over veggies? Like if you have veggies that you serve and then you have leftovers and you want to revive them, this is a really fun way to do this. So speaking of nachos, 
again, we can't have game day without nachos. That's what I really come from, come for as a nacho. So uh, Abby's going to get up off her seat and help me make these nachos. It's a two person job. Hi. I mean, these are going to be some big nachos. So <laughs> I wouldn't want you to have to handle it all by It's good that you're tall. <laughs> Well, these are going to be some tall nachos. So. These are the mile high nachos. They're not just any nachos. Okay. These are like really amazing for game day. And of course we're doing them on the round uh, stone. The beautiful yeah. white stone. So our stoneware is on the host offer this month. So 60% off. If you're hosting, definitely look into which stoneware piece is your favorite. If you're not hosting, reach out to the consultant that invited you. Maybe you want to host a party before the end of the month and get a piece of stoneware. This is one of my favorites. Well, I think so too. It's not just, you know, we usually think pizza. Mm-hmm. What about cookies? A pizza cookie. Pazuki. <laughs> you guys know what a pazuki, if you don't just say it, just say pazuki. It makes you feel happy. The it's, more silly. Say, it's like a pizza cookie. Um, but nachos, nachos are great on stoneware because it helps those chips stay really crispy and hot, maintains mm-hmm. that nice even temperature so that you don't have those soggy fall apart And this chips. one with the lip on the edge is so great because then nothing's going to fall off. It's you know, if you did it on a cookie show. sheet or something, it's just not going to hold everything in there. No. Oh, okay. So as we go through these nachos, we're going to give you a couple of rules for the best way to make nachos. Okay. So the first rule is sturdy chips. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have some sturdy chips here. Because again, you want them to not get uh, flimsy and fall apart. The next, this is always a rule of pampered chef. It's a pampered chef. First rule of business. <laughs> First rule of fight club of pampered chef <laughs> is grate your own cheese. But hey, when you're making nachos, you want really um, thick, coarse grates of cheese because they melt better. So we have our adjustable double grater that has this extra coarse side to it. Look, just look. Can we show them? Mm-hmm. Can you get in on how coarse and delicious that cheese is? And again, you can find this at the store, but grate it yourself. You're going to save money. Yeah. And it lasts longer and melts really great. And none of those preservatives that you don't need. Yeah. It just tastes so much better like this. Okay. We got a couple of rules so far, right? Yeah. Okay. Sturdy chips, stoneware, coarse grated cheese. Okay. We've got our first layer. Mm-hmm. We're going to next do our chicken. Yep. We got our chicken. This is just seasoned with our um, Jamaican jerk seasoning, but you could season it with anything that you want. You could even do beef. You like to yeah. put, like steak. You could do like two beef. different meats if you want. <laughs> half and half. <laughs> That's crazy. Yes, you half, could. Like mix both or do, you know, half on one side, half on the other. Somebody likes something different. I love it. All right. That's looking good. Is that looking good? Yeah. Do we need a little bit more, a little oh. bit more. Yeah. Okay, now we, we got have... the sturdy chips, so we can do a lot of chicken. We got the sturdy chips, and we got the stone. Okay, now I have pinto beans. I'm gonna add... And again, pinto beans, black beans, whatever you want. I'm gonna do about half of these. And then we've got olives. Again, yeah. olives could be questionable, some people. I love olives. I know. We talked about this last right. time. Let's get your life. Go ahead, do the olives. Yeah. And we've got. Jalapenos. These are the pickled ones, mm-hmm. um, which again, I like a little crunch of a fresh yeah. jalapeno. Okay. But the pickled, I like too. You do you. And it's easy to keep in the pantry, obviously. Absolutely. All of these are. Okay. And then I'll get you on deck with the tomatoes. Okay. Um, what else, guys? So we're making obviously the chicken wings, the nachos, and we're making some sliders. What else do you guys make? I know chili. I usually go to a Super Bowl party where there's always chili. We were talking about Cincinnati chili before oh, this, right? That's Skyline cool. chili. That's right. So, you know, different cities have the different, their football food, right? I like the rivalry. Yeah. <laughs> I like the drama. Okay. Now we start again with another layer of chips. Okay. So this is where I asked Abby, like, does she have any, like, architecture background? <laughs> because you have to have, you have to, you know, it's like Jenga. It is. You have to build it. It's this is another rule, another rule of nacho. And this is a chip plate Dalton original recipe, right? I think it is. This was a long time ago. I was here at the time, but I'm pretty sure that a consultant created this recipe and we just had to publish it yeah. because no, it didn't come from dietitian. Okay. Oh yeah, yes. I forgot to mention my nutrition background. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about that today. No, I mean, but I just love the layers, right? Yeah. There's nothing worse 
than going out to eat, ordering nachos, and you eat the stuff with the toppings on the top, and then you just have a bunch of dry chips on the bottom. Okay, then this next layer is just the cheese. All right, it was easy. Just leave all the way that cheese. You don't want to knock over all your beautifully no. <laughs> architectured chips. Looks good. You got to have it. proper chip placements. Every chip needs some cheese. Okay. All right. And I know I said I swear by um, stoneware for nachos, but if you want just a quick, maybe it's a single serve. If you're having a rough day and you just need a single serve of nachos, you know how I like to make them mm -hmm. in the air fryer. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the stone bar pan Ooh, in the air fryer. The little the guy. One. The little yeah, guy. That the fits. mini one. Yeah. Yeah. Because then if you have like cheese dripping, it's all in there. Ooh, yeah. Perfect. Who knew that Abby was a nacho aficionado? <laughs> I, I learned something new about you all the time. Okay. Then it goes, yes. More cheese. We can kind of do the rest of the cheese and then the rest. You guys, is this, is this high enough for you? What do you think? Mile high, <laughs> mile high nachos. Okay, chicken okay. and beans. Tomato, oh, chicken, beans, olives. Beans, okay. Good thing we have the lip on the bottom of this. I know. You. It is. It's perfect. It's really. So hopefully you're having a crowd when you do this, right? Absolutely. That's why I think the Super Bowl is so fun because it's really an opportunity to like show off, show uh -huh. off your favorite snacks and treats. Okay. All right. <laughs> Say we call it. <laughs> we gotta call it. I don't think we can lift this out. Oh, I can do. It. Can you do it? All right. She's gonna take this out. Take it to the oven. Take it to the oven, and we come back. We'll finish it with the toppings. Perfect. And Can't wait. Cheese. Thanks, Abby. All right. Are you guys getting hungry or, or what? Do you guys eat dinner before this? I, I want to assess the situation. I hope we're all getting hungry. Okay. Speaking of getting hungry, we have our next guest and it is Brian Silmas and we're going to make some French onion pot roast sliders. I mean, all this chicken, we need some red meat. Okay. Especially you, Sandy, because I know how much you love red meat. I, <laughs> when it's game day, I do it all. Yeah. Okay, I do it all. All, all the good bets are off. That's know. right. Okay, so tell us about this recipe. I know you created it for the Rock Rock and the Slow Cooker Stand, and really for like game day. Oh yeah, this yes. is totally game day for uh, whenever there's a football game on. Thing, three things I love, hot yeah. roast, French uh, onion soup, uh -huh. and dip sandwiches. Yes. So this is kind of my way of taking those things and kind of incorporating it all into one. Uh, so all we have here is a three pound-ish um, chuck roast. Chuck roast. That okay. I'm just going to season it with our French onion dip seasoning, which is gonna add so much flavor. It's gonna be the baseline of all of the flavors uh, for it. Uh, this is, we say about two tablespoons. I go a little bit heavy just to make sure we get everything coated up nicely. Um, this is really great too for uh, dips. You can mix it with cream cheese and then spread that cream cheese on a bagel for a really, really yummy um, uh, bagel for breakfast. Uh, put it in soups to kind of add a little bit extra that French onion flavor to soups and broths and things like that. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get this all coated. And that's so easy, like just the this, seasoning yeah. and the thing. There's so few ingredients in this. It takes some time, but just like any slow cooker recipe, takes a little bit of time, but it's all hands off. You do all this, you're going to see it come together and it's not going to be too difficult. So uh, we got this heated up a little bit. Uh, let's actually, do you want to heat it for like another more minute? Yeah, let's heat okay. it for another minute. I can slice the onions Perfect. while we kind of wait. Yeah, so that. there's going to be onions that go in with it and you can't have French onion soup or uh, French onion without some onions in it. So she's just going to slice it up. Okay. Um, I love onions in this kind of application because it just like cooks down and gets really, really soft yeah. it adds so much flavor to the to the meat um so i like mine kind of thick and chunky yep i'm uh, doing mine with the simple slicer on the number two setting mm -hmm. so that's kind of right in the middle it's not too thick not too stringy um of course our simple slicer is a much safer super simple. Uh, version of a mandolin because you've got this food holder here so you don't have to have your 
hands near the blade at like all. my dad over the holidays. Oh, no. Like, no my dad dad a little, oh. Happens to the best of us, but that's why we have to go he in. He needs that's a simple why, slicer. That's why we need one of those for sure. So. He definitely needs a simple slicer. All right. Yeah, and pot roast, usually uh, you can add celery, you can add carrots, you can add a lot of different vegetables in here. For this one, I just like doing the uh, uh, the onions. But if you want to do some pieces of carrot, because that's my kid's favorite, is oh, the carrots like the and the carrots all You get to throw a little bit of that, a little, a little bit of sweetness to the whole thing. That and it's really a nice good. little kind of little snack to put uh, in your mouth after it's cooked. Yeah. So this has been preheating a little bit. Okay. So be we'll be good. We can get some browning on it. So the Ooh. thing when you uh, when you want to make sure that you do, you want to make sure you get that crust. You could just put it in, put water or your seasoning and stuff on top of it. And right in the slow cooker. And then right into it. You can do that. Uh, but by doing this, by developing those flavors, that caramelization adds so much flavor and really kind of helps everything kind of come together to make it deep and rich and just really exquisite. So. And how easy. So you just brown this. What does it take? Six, seven, eight yeah. minutes to brown. Six or seven, eight, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, just so you can actually kind of start to smell it come, uh, come out. So while that's cooking, I'm going to set this aside because one of the things that I like to serve we're going to do these on pretzel rolls. Yeah. So we're going to be little sliders. One of the things that I like to put on it is horsey sauce, horseradish sauce. Yeah. So um, this is a really, really easy one. I like horseradish because it brings everything together, gives you a little bit of that spice. Brian, you are the sauce guy. I, I am the sauce king of seen Chicago. Brian in other Cat's Kitchen Live videos, but he always comes up with the best sauce. Yeah. So this is so going to be an easy one. This is a sour cream, not, not a Greek yogurt, Sandy. But, Can you do you know, it with Greek yogurt? You probably could, oh. yeah. You'll add a little bit more tang to it. Okay. I like this because it just uh, is a little bit creamier, a little bit uh, more unctuous. So and this is just horse horseradish, grated horseradish, not not, not this sauce. sauce. Okay. It's just the pure grated horseradish. Um, we're gonna add buy it. that from the store. Yep, buy it from the store. Okay. A little bit of sugar and salt in here. A little bit of mayo because it's really super healthy, you know. <laughs> and then it's a little game day. A little bit okay. of white wine vinegar. So okay. um, then we're gonna stir it up. This is this super easy. It's got a little bit of sweetness. It's got a little bit of that heat that kind of you know opens up your 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 nose, so you can smell all these great flavors. Love horseradish. So we're gonna whip it up, and along with the uh, the sliders with a little bit of like Swiss or Havarti cheese, this is gonna be an amazing. So good. Brian, is that a sauce you could do maybe a couple hours before you're ready to serve, or maybe a day before? To Absolutely. Flavors. Yeah, you can make it right now and serve it, or yeah. if you have time, make, when, it, ahead. make it ahead. Want just one less step, yeah. So if you're planning a party, you can have it done. You don't have to worry about any of those people coming. Or you're like, what, what's going on? Right. Where my horse better sauce? Exactly. <laughs> so we're gonna give this a quick. Yeah, it's probably Let's been going a little browning. bit. Yeah, we might have gotten some browning. Yep. There we go. Oh Starting to get the brown. You could go a little bit longer. So that's gonna be good for for right now. Um, so now that we have that, we sear it again for another six minutes on uh, on this. Well, for sake of what we're doing, go ahead and put the onions in. We're okay. just gonna get it get it going. So onions goes right into the the pot with it. And again, the rock pot is great because it holds so much of its temperature. It's great for getting a sear. You go in the uh, in the oven, in the microwave, in the grill, on the grill. Uh, this is just some more Worcestershire sauce and uh, beef broth. I said Worcestershire, and I kind of said it right. It's, it's all right. It's, it's, it's a tongue tie. If you like really say it the way you spell it, like Wor Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Yeah. So we're going to put the lid on. That's it. Not not quite. Okay. Not quite. <laughs> That's all we do here. Okay. But we're going to transfer it over to one of my favorites from the new season, the digital slow cooker stand which is going to be great. You're going to be able to set that for eight hours. You're going to be able to cook it so all those proteins break down, all the fats break down, so it gets really, really nice. And one of the things that I really love about it, it transfers from cook to warm, so then it can keep warm the whole time. So when it, you set it for eight hours, right at eight hours, it switches to warm, right? Yep. Love that. So, so great for a party. Yeah, right? it doesn't, people... doesn't overcook, yeah. and then it's great. So when your friends come and they're ready to eat, you can grab it. So. so you would just leave this maybe on the slow cooker stand at a party? Yeah, leave it on the party it. on warm, and then when people are ready to come eat, they can come get it. So all day long, I've been cooking. <laughs> he really has been, actually. I actually have. But the great thing about it is eight hours, and really, 
Ooh. no i have been doing pretty much nothing that's right it's that's it's right. been doing its thing it's been switching off to warm now you can already see how super tender it is but now we just need to give it a little bit of a shred with our quick shreds which are great magnetic they it's nest so easy, easy to store super easy to store and we're just going to go in here and start shredding this up Barely takes any effort to get that going. You can see it's just falling apart and it is just amazing. So I'm gonna finish shredding this up, but I know, Abby, there was a couple things that you wanted to uh, get everybody talking about. Yeah, I the smell in here is amazing. It's been cooking all day. It's been torturous being here at the office all day, just smelling this. And so now I'm so excited that we get to eat this after. So um, the giveaway for today, um, we're going to do the French onion dip mix. So Jennifer Gonzalez, Scott Chancer, Betty Duncan, Sharon Bird, and Jill St. Germain, we're going to be sending you a French onion dip mix so you can make this awesome recipe. So again, that was Jennifer Gonzalez, Scott Chancer, Betty Duncan, Sharon Bird, and Jill St. Germain. Please send us a note in the Q&A section of Zoom put your name and your email address so we can reach out to you. And before I send it back to Brian and Sandy, I wanted to talk about this slow cooker stand a little bit. So right now in February, consultants who join the business doing just like what Becky does, sharing recipes, sharing food, bringing people around the table, sharing all kinds of tips and tricks while earning a little bit of extra incremental income. You can join the business in February and in your first 30 days, if you submit sales, you can earn the slow cooker stand. So maybe maybe some of those giveaway winners should do that. Then you're all set. You got the dip mix, you've got the slow cooker stand, you're all set for these sliders. Yeah, we're super excited for everybody to get their hands on the slow cooker stand, the French onion dip. So you guys can be making this as soon as you get your hands on. Yeah. So now we're gonna finish up the nachos that are still high, still Abby high. Um, <laughs> So we're gonna settle down a little yeah. bit. We also have a quick um, guacamole that we made in the manual food processor, which is also on sale this month. So great for guacs, for salsas, mm -hmm. for sauces, just chopping up it's veggies. Is it up a little bit? Yeah. Where do we want to put the sauce on first? What do you think? I mean, Why don't we do the cheese sauce? Let's do some cheese sauce okay. too. Because, you know, there's not enough cheese on this already. We need to put- I need um, to see the cheese sauce. Ton more because this is one of my favorites. No more. Nacho cheese in a can. Oh gosh! I'll have to make this for my father-in-law, who is Mister Cheese Sauce. Is he? He every time, no matter what the event, there's always cheese sauce and cheese. <laughs> so All right. I'll do that. Let's do some cilantro around. Some guacamole, guys. Right. Come on! If you brought this to a party, and then sour cream there, if you if you want to put any of them, but. I think it looks oh, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. All right. Let's build your sandwiches. Yeah. So let's finish up the sandwiches. Uh, where we have some made, there's a little bit of Havarti cheese down there. And this is going to be super easy because we're just going to take a big old hunk of the steaming meat. <laughs> there we go. A couple of those because oh, this is extremely tender. So it's so juicy. The pretzel, buns. the pretzel buns. The juice you can use for like a, a dip sandwich. So a little bit of that but then a little bit of the horsey sauce. And you've got some Havarti cheese, but you could also do- Swiss fish. cheese, yeah. or really whatever cheese you like. I know my kids, they like the Havarti a lot. Uh, they like, they're like Swiss. Good? Oh, absolutely. Okay. We're a Munster family. Munster, cheddar, really anything. Those look amazing. <laughs> High five, go team. <laughs> That was so awesome, you guys. We got our wings, we got our nachos, we got our sliders. We got everything. I don't think there's anything else that- I don't think so either. I mean, I think well, maybe a frosty one. Other than that, <laughs> exactly. Why don't you guys put in the chat what was your favorite thing that you saw today? Uh, what are you going to make for game day? We yeah. hope we inspired you for something really fun. Um, yes, we want to hear from you. And the next Let's Get You Live, mm -hmm. mark your calendars. It's March eighth at seven p.m. Central Time. We're going to be doing nostalgic yep. phase. This is the one we're really excited about. It's all those comfort foods with a little bit of a twist. A little bit of yeah. a twist, and we've got. New products, new recipes. Mm -hmm. We got a big new product. Really big. This is going to be one of my favorites. I think that we've done. We've had so it's much. It's going fun. to change your kitchen, one hundred percent. It's going to change your cooking. Please make sure to tune in. We'll be talking all about it. Um, there's also going to be a survey to pop up. Mm -hmm. So please take that survey. Let us know what you thought of this. 
Thank you yeah. so much for watching, guys. This was super fun, everybody. So fun. Do we have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. So we're just going to stay on. That's our show for today. But there's a few questions left over in the Q&A. So if you're done with us today, have a great <laughs> night. If you have, want to stay on for the questions, we're just going to jump right in. So um, first Give question. Sure. Yeah. Hard question. Yeah, uh, Can you guys handle uh, it? Putting you on the hot Sweaty. Seat. Sweaty. Okay. So Sandy, you mentioned the nachos in the air fryer. How yeah. do you do it? Oh, so I just put chips down, a little bit of cheese. Mm -hmm. I usually do the bake setting just for like seven or eight minutes. Yeah, super <laughs> quick. I mean, you can put a little bit of oil, but you probably don't need much. Don't just a little oil. bit of a spray and then- It's kind yeah. of foolproof. And the chips stay really, really crispy yeah. and yummy. Perfect. Just until the cheese is melted, yeah. Okay, Brian, this one's for you. Could you do the multi-cooker instead of the rock crock? Oh, absolutely. The multi-cooker does the same, uh, slow cooking functions that mm -hmm. the rock crock does with the slow cooker stand. So still eight hours on low. That's, oh, that's great. That's, that's perfect. And then if you want to go quicker, you can, but the texture is always going to be better when you go that long, slow cook time. Cool. Okay. So now about the cheese sauce. So Samantha said that hers always turns out thick. Mm -hmm. What should she do to combat that? I would it's say, thicker than she wants. Yeah. I'd say maybe add a little bit more milk. Add a little bit more milk, yep. add a little less flour. If she wants a little bit thinner, then that's that's a good way to kind of go about it. Yeah. Yep. Just looking to see if anything else has come in. Okay, so can you repeat, Sandy, the chicken wings? What did you set it to? Do you remember? Chicken wings was air fry for 30 minutes. Okay. Yep. And that tell like when you select air fry, it gives the temperature. You don't mm -hmm. have to adjust the temperature. Not. And then it'll be packed right through and you just go ahead and rotate your trace. Yeah, perfect. Okay. I think that's it for today. Thanks, guys. Bye, everybody.